start of the new series. It's called The Basics. And it's just basically, I guess, little basics of RC stuff that you might want to know or find out or see where a certain part is or maybe why it's called something, you know, whatever. So on this episode from RC Guy Garage on The Basics, all nice and shined up. We're actually going to be working on this Max from Traxxas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, how to access what's called the Cush Drive. And um, I guess why it's called a Cush Drive. It's technically a spur gear, but if you separate that word kind of like Cush from Cushion, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Never mind me talking. So let's just um, pop the top off and see what it takes to get that Cush Drive out. If you own a Max, you already know, obviously, how to take off the top, so it's not like I'm telling you, showing you anything different. But um, as far as accessing the Cush Drive, in reality, the only thing you really need to do, and this is also a part of, I guess, the cleaning maintenance that needs to happen with these things, and I'd recommend getting some kind of a, um, a vacuum with a small fitting or whatever that can actually get in and vacuum, like, out these sections right here, because... With these maxes, there's a lot of grit that I'm finding. It gets into it, and I feel like it's just because of the way the thing is designed, there's too many open areas. Like, there's a large gapped open area that's actually right here. It's in between this um, pinion cover, which is, this is the pinion cover, and this is technically the spur gear, or if you want to call it the cush drive uh, portion of this vehicle. That's where that is. So, in order to take these two pieces off, to take the pinion cover off, it's uh, just two screws, one right there and one right there. And that consists of, I think it's a uh, 2.5 millimeter. Yeah, so 2.5 millimeter. And that will take out these two screws right here. So, you got one right here. You got another one right here. And you can hear the grit. We did clean this out already. And then I just take the driver and just kind of pop the cover up and just pull the cover out. And obviously then that exposes, you can see that exposes the actual pinion itself. Then order, in order to get this cover off right here, you just kind of like, same thing, two screws, one right there. There you go. Another one here, so two on this little back side, and then you've got um, you got two here, so one there, one there, and then you have another one that's actually connected to the actual motor plate itself. So we'll pop that motor plate off, the motor plate one off right now, just to get it out of the way. It's like that. <laughs> Don't lose your screws. And then the two forward ones, this one right here. And all these screws are the same, except for the motor plate cover one. That's a different uh, type of screw, but it's pretty obvious what it is. But all these screws are all the same size, except for the one that fell into the battery tray which is right here you can see it's a uh, round headed screw versus a uh, squared off one so then you can just pop that cover out just like that still have those two screws retained in there and then the cush drive is this piece right here okay so let's see let's see why this is actually called a cush drive so, um, the Cush Drive technically has, like, several kind of, I guess, components to it. Obviously, you've got, um, I guess I want to call it a uh, either a forward or aft bearing. You could call it forward, you could all call it aft. It's kind of towards the back of the vehicle, so I guess we'll call it an aft bearing. Then you also have a forward bearing. That slides off. Then you kind of have like a intermediate kind of, I guess, that actually connects into, and I'll put this down, it actually connects into the center diff, which is actually right there. 
So the center diff is actually housed or located right in basically the underneath part of the car. So when you flip this up, when you flip this upside down, you're taking this center brace off, you're taking this piece off, you're taking the wheelie bar off, and there's a bunch of screws that make it so that you can actually access the center diff, which is right there. And we're actually going to get into that as soon as we're done here. So, but we're talking about right now, we're actually talking about the cush drive. So you can see on this, it actually has kind of, I guess you want to call that maybe like a secondary gear or intermediate gear. Uh, this is the actual uh, cush drive. And this is kind of, I guess you would call the, um, the spur gear. So you just kind of just pull this gear off like that. There is a pin that actually kind of keeps that in place. Pull that pin out. And then when you look at this, there are six screws that actually kind of keep this together. Now, these screws right here, so this one, these round-headed style screws, those are the ones that actually keep the, um, the spur gear itself on. And those are taken off with a two millimeter. So take off that screw. What I should be doing is I should be using my, my driver. Driver actually makes it a lot quicker. But I guess we could just do this by hand for now. And taking these th three screws out, what this will do is this will basically, this will re release that um spur gear so if you ever needed to replace the spur gear if you stripped it out or whatever that's how you do it because it's obviously like some type of a plastic nylon or whatever and it has those uh round headed round headed cap screws if it'll focus on it any day now okay never mind whatever round headed cap screw and then these countersunk screws same thing. Oh, actually, I can show you how to pull that gear off. So now that that's separated, um, you can see how it slides off. You're basically just pushing the actual cush section of the drive out. And then it's obvious how it goes back together because it has an inset. Obviously, if you try to put it on this way, it's not going to go. And you'd know how to put this thing back together. So we'll take that off. And then now we're actually going to open up technically the cush or cushion part of this uh, cush drive. So again, three screws. These are those tapered head screws. There's three of them. And it's still a, uh, what did I say, a two? Two millimeter. We'll take those screws out. And then what you can do is basically you just pull on the shaft. And there's a couple of components that are actually in here as well. So you can see that there is a pin which basically just holds the shaft. There is also a little, um, little spacer that... I think this is also made out of a plastic. Yeah, it's like a little plastic spacer. And when you look at it, you can see that part of the pin actually kind of sits in it. If you see what I'm saying. See, like, right there? kind of has a groove where the pin kind of sits in it. Focus. See, see the groove that's right there? Man, my fingers are looking destroyed. So the reason why this is called a cush drive, right, is technically because of this little piece right here, which is basically like a uh, some type of either a rubber or an elastomer or whatever. And we'll throw this pin back in here. Just so I can show you how it operates. All right. So see what happens is without that piece of rubber, both forward and backward, the way this operates is it actually 
you know, it, it, this piece of rubber, this piece, this piece of rubber, what it actually does is it actually cushions both the forward and uh, reverse drive. And I think what it's doing is it's actually protecting against impacts, um, maybe sudden acceleration and deceleration, sudden braking. But I think this is actually a, a, a fairly uh, good idea um, on Traxxas's part to create what is called a cush drive. And you can see... If I can get a thing in here, see how it, see how there's a certain amount of cushion, and that's why they call it a cush drive. So as laid out, these are technically the components that are part of what Traxxas calls the cush drive, and the whole reason why it's called a cush drive is because of this piece right here, which is technically a cushion, which I think you saw the operation of that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this thing back together. I know it looks like a whole bunch of parts, but if you take pictures, like before you pull things apart, you'll know how to put things back together. That's one of the advantages that you have, other than maybe watching a video like this, where you can kind of see it, you know, blown apart and then put back together. So let's just uh, put this thing back together. Hopefully I can actually do this in frame. So it might be a good idea... Um, to go ahead and clean components while you have things out, I can actually see that there's a very slight amount of grit that's actually in here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, take a vacuum and vacuum these this gear out, get into all those little nooks and crannies, I guess you want to call them. Same thing with this. We're going to clean this gear because, believe it or not, there's actually grit that's on the inside of that little reset section right there where the gears are. So we'll clean those two parts up, and then uh, we'll reassemble this as a unit. Alright, so to reassemble this unit, it's actually uh, pretty easy. Uh, um, it's basically just, you know, taking things and putting it back together the way it came apart. So we're going to go ahead and do this right here. So you can see how that little section where the pin actually um lays back in we'll set that piece into there and we'll take the shaft we're going to stick the shaft all the way through so that we can actually put a pin right into that hole right there just like that then we'll settle that back on and what that's doing is it's giving it enough room to be able to put that bearing on that back side like it's like you need to have okay and all these things are going to be facing like so all these screws are going to be facing this gear so then don't forget that little shim okay there was a little shim that was part of that and make sure that you align that those groove section that actually kind of holds on uh, to that pin or captures it kind of in there and basically, it just kind of like slides into place. Um, if it wasn't slid on completely, uh, there would actually be a gap. So we can actually see that there's no gap here. So then from there, you can take the top cover or top plate. And then again, um, it basically fits only one way. If you put it that way, obviously, it doesn't recess down. So give it a little spin. And then you can see it recessed down. Take your little... Um, tapered screws put your tapered screws in place and this is just assembling the actual cush part of this drive whatever you do just don't over tighten these screws just kind of snug them down one by one just very lightly and then what you can do is kind of like a um, I guess you can call it like a torque sequence so you just snug in it and this is plastic, or a glass-reinforced plastic, or nylon, or whatever the heck this stuff is. So now that you get them snug down, you can then go ahead and just lightly torque each one. Let's go around a couple times. Take your time. And that's pretty much it. For the actual cush 
drive portion of this. Then you can take your spur gear, and now you can actually connect your spur gear. Again, uh, it's one of those things where it only go is only going to go on one way, so you just kind of like <laughs> snap it down into place. Take your round topped cap screws, throw those in place. And the same thing, just don't over tighten these plastic pieces. If you have a driver, uh, go ahead and use a driver. But if you're not familiar with how the driver works, um, you might want to do stuff like this by hand. Especially when you're dealing with plastics. So we'll do that little torque sequence again. Now each one is sufficiently torqued down and that's how it should look. Then you take your pin, which is for that kind of, I guess, intermediate gear in between the actual center diff and the actual spur cush drive. And then obviously you take that little keyed in section, place that gear on, put your uh, front bearing on, put your rear bearing on, and then you're done. So that is basically, I guess, how to uh, deconstruct or take apart your cush drive. I don't really see that there would ever be a need to pull that apart other than maybe if it wore out over time, which will probably take a considerable amount of time to potentially wear out the actual cush part of that drive. Uh, we're not talking about, you know, the actual spur gear part. It's nice that that actually is a replaceable part. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this thing back together and then we're going to do a video on how to uh, take out the um, center diff because that would be the next thing to clean. So let's just, um, let's just pop this thing back together. You don't have to watch the video. Um, you can just watch your own video. So setting this into place, it's as easy as just dropping it in. <laughs> and obviously you just take your cover try to clean everything as you go take your little um, spear gear cover drop that into place you got your rear screws again all these screws are the same except for the one that actually attaches to the motor plate uh, the motor plate to this actual cover itself so you got the two screws in the back, two screws in the front. So you've got a total of five screws that you take out to, um, I guess, service and or clean this portion right here. Then we've got our screw that goes in this way. It goes through the motor plate into the plastic um, push drive slash pinion housing and again it's not using on its what's an extra strength here and i'm still thinking that this is the area right here that is causing the issue with all the grit that's getting in there because when you see how this cover is designed it's just it leaves it leaves a massive i feel open gap right here that just allows material to kind of get in there. That's the only thing that I can think of other than maybe just the fact that it's, you know, tolerances, you know, there's a gap here. It's, it's some of the grit that gets in there is just so minute, but it builds up. And I think that's the problem that we have with this. So put that piece on. This is a, uh, what's called the pinion cover. Again, no one else wants a mega strength. Let's lock it down. Nice and easy. And that's it. And you're done. <laughs> this is part of that uh, new series from RC Guy Garage. And basically all it is, is it's, it's basically called The Basics. It's I'm going to be going through different various vehicles. We're going to take things apart. Going to show you what's what. Um, 
maybe you might come across one of these videos and be like, hey, you know, I was wondering what that was. So if this helps somebody out there, hopefully it does. That's awesome. Uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Share the video if you want. Uh, the biggest thing is obviously subscribe to the channel. Channel's been taken off like a rocket and I am like floored by it. I think I'm actually, I think I'm literally at 1,800 subscribers right now. So anyways, thanks for watching this episode from RC Guy Garage. Getting back to the basics. Thanks for watching. Thank you.